how many people here know how to use a computer? All right, that's a good majority of you guys. How many people here actually know how to use a computer? Well, that's significantly less. My name is Oscar, and I'm here today to talk to you guys about the boundaries faced in the education of computer science. Currently, in the United States, the demand for computer scientists will increase 32% in the next 10 to 15 years, far above the average of 15% in other sectors. And in the United Kingdom, there are 100,000 graduate jobs for only 80,000 applicants. When I was in primary school, computer science was taught in an awful way. The British education system dedicated all of its time to teaching me how to use word processors and how to make PowerPoint presentations. So I can definitely say that without this teaching, I would have never been able to stand on this stage with this swanky pre PowerPoint presentation projected for you to see. <laughs> Luckily, Michael Gove, during his time as the education secretary for the UK, realized that this presentation would have in fact been possible without the intervention of my ICT primary school teacher. So currently, the syllabus is actually quite up to date. But the issue with technology is that it innovates far too quickly for most, for most schools to keep up with. And the last syllabus took several years of being thoroughly irrelevant before it was changed, and what's to say it won't be the same this time. In the, as it stands currently, the syllabus is actually pretty interesting. In your last two years, the issue becomes less with the content taught, but more with the way it's examined. In your first year, you're given two exams, one on the theory of computing and one on the programming. And in the programming exam, you're given two hours to program a large number of solutions to random problems. On a piece of software, you've been given seven months before. Several months before, not seven. In my opinion, this is inherently flawed. It treats computing as if it's a memorizational-based skill, where in reality, I think it should be treated as a coursework-based subject. In art, you're given two whole days to produce your exam work. I think it should be the same in computing. I think you should be given a far more complex problem, longer to solve it, and you should be allowed to use external resources like some form of restricted internet and your textbooks. I've found that personally, my, like, my solutions to problems come in bursts of inspirations, similar to artistic subjects, and also through discussions with peers. And from what my computing teacher has told me, uh, this is largely the same in careers, in your like, career as a computer scientist. Most of your solutions will come from having time to actually think about your problems and uh, talking to other people about them. Why shouldn't the A-levels reflect this? Because also in university, especially in your later years, your grades are almost entirely decided on coursework and practical examinations. And it seems weird that the A-levels don't reflect this. In the second year, it does get better, with your coursework being worth 60% of your overall grade. There are some issues of flexibility in what you can program, what you can't program, but it's pretty good. It's the first time in 12 years that your ability as a coder is fundamentally challenged, which is strange given how in-demand workers in the sector are. Now, moving on to the next boundary, women. In the United States, the average university course has six women for every four men. In computer science, and this is largely the same in the UK, there are six women for every 24 men in computer science courses. 40 years ago, uh, computer science and STEM subjects generally were solely advertised to men. And I don't understand the difference then, but that was 40 years ago. So you assume things have changed. But in fact, the opposite has occurred. Computer science is the only course since 2002, is the only STEM course since 2002, where the difference between men and women has actually expanded. And I think that comes from the fact that computer science just seems like a boring subject, which still follows this male-female split. And I think that some people have found a solution to this. In Harvey Mudd College in the United States saw so it quadrupled its number of female graduates when it shifted the focus of its courses away from the science behind computers and to actually programming and problem solving. And it also split its classes into sets based on skill. It's pretty easy to understand that more people are willing to take a course that they find interesting and they won't be worried about feeling out of their depth because everyone in the class will have similar levels of knowledge. I think if the British education system could do something similar, this difference would be a virtue. Anyways, to conclude, in my opinion, computer science is great, as you can probably tell. 
Um, programming is the closest I've ever felt to being a detective without seeing the outside world, and also to feeling like a wizard but for making things out of nothing. But it's also led me to feel like an imbecile for hours at a time because the reason my program didn't work was because I misspelled the word print. And it's a shame that this joy and sadness is not felt by more people, and those who it is felt by can only experience it once they slug through hours of making PowerPoint presentations and Excel spreadsheets. Hopefully, in 20 years' time, this room will be filled with people who actually know how to use a computer. Thank you very much for listening.